The athletes getting ready for the start of the 10,000 metres women's championship. Only the second time this event has ever been held. And the three Britons taking part in this, Julie Holland of Sale. Uh, Angie Hulley, formerly Angie Payne, Angie Payne of Leeds. And Jill Hunter of uh, the Valley Club in the North East. Julie Holland. Best time, 32.55.77. Second in the women's three A's. It'll be a fairly warm, humid night for these girls. 25 laps of the track they've got to face. And actually, we hope there's not a similar problem it happens to them. It's happened to the men in the 10,000 metres when they had to wait some 10, 15 minutes uh, because of the finish of the women's marathon. But there is one big difference here, Brandon Foster, and that is that... Uh, in the walk, they've only got to walk about 70 metres in the stadium to the finishing line. That's right. The girls had discussions yesterday about that problem, having noticed it during the men's 10,000 metres. And that was explained to them. Angie Hilly there, formerly Angie Payne, and she was telling me this morning that they were happy that, with the resolution because they won't be starting on the outside lane uh, right on the, on the start line here. They'll be moving 20 metres down the track for that staggered start. And they all said they'd never done a race with a staggered start before, and they were asking what, what was the reason for it and what was the advantage of it. Well, my feeling is that this field of 27 runners is an enormous field. It's far too big for a championship like this because the spread of abilities goes from 31 minutes, 31 minutes and 15 seconds, Gikan, Romania, and then there are some girls who will be two minutes behind that. So there'll be athletes getting lapped, and there'll be all kinds of problems when that happens, especially if it happens with big groups. So this is one event which, sadly, I think they're going to have to move into a qualification round. Maybe they could do it on times, or maybe they'll have to run a heat earlier in the week. But that's the decision that needs to be made, because in this current climate, they're looking at ways to make distance running safer, not in terms of injury to health, but in terms of getting a safer and a fairer run around the track. Well, I would suggest to them that smaller fields is a better way of doing that than doing things like staggered starts, which is what they're going to do today. That's probably the favourite for this race, Victoria Gikan, Romania. We've seen her front-run races, we've seen her change her tactics, but I think uh, she's the one to beat. Having said that, she's not a hottest favourite as we've seen through the rest of the week, and I think there'll be several of the others who can give her a good race, particularly people like Ulrich of East Germany, who we've been watching for. She hasn't really done very much this season. She won the East German Championships a few weeks ago, and uh, that was probably her marker and telling us that she's ready. And in fact, someone else to watch out for is Romanova, a Roanova of the uh, Soviet Union, four for one, who got the silver medal behind a bomb Murray by less than a second in the 3,000 metres and stepping up in distance here. And actually, David, when you think about it, she must be kicking herself when she looks at the replay of that uh, 3,000 metres because the start that she gave Yvonne Murray when she kicked with about 500 metres to go, that was, the, that was the start she gave her, and that was how much Yvonne Murray won by. So maybe she know. I mean, she obviously knows she's running well, but maybe she thinks, tactically, I'm going to have to do it a bit better tonight. And if she was as close to Yvonne Murray over 3,000 metres, then if the pace isn't too fast, I think she'll have a very good chance in this 10,000 metres. Certainly I'd be surprised, unless the pace is very slow, if uh, Romanova, who we're looking at now, uh, doesn't just sit and wait. Those are normal tactics, and she's normally not out sprinted. And certainly she was closing on Avel Murray in that 3,000 metres, but she just got caught totally by surprise. It was a good tactical burst by Yvonne. Romanova, now 27, first in the Goodwood Games, 5,000 metres. She's had a fairly hard season, but obviously, obviously thrives on it. There's Aurora Cunha, who finished third in the London Marathon two years ago. And when you look at the field, you know, it's made up of some really good marathon runners. It's made up of some outstanding cross-country runners. And they all come together at 10,000 metres on the track. And I think some of them missed the marathon because they chose to run the 10,000 metres because they saw the marathon course was really difficult. And they all knew that uh, Rosa Mota was in it. There, that number 28, walk, 208 with a pigtail walking away from us. Kirsten Pressler of West Germany. She's going to be one of the favourites too. And this is a, a good quality field. It's an outstanding field by any stretch of the imagination. And you know when it comes to the World Championship for the Olympics, you wouldn't add many runners to this to make it into a World Championship race, would you? Only two are to me, Brendan. Ingrid Christensen, the world record holder, who's having a baby. And Elizabeth Colgan, the Commonwealth champion, who's also having a baby. 
So that underlines it. The European Championship of Women's 10,000 meters is equivalent to a world or an Olympic race because the best female distance runners in the world come from Europe. They're now looking a little confused. They're deciding whether they should stand in the back row or the front row. Not many of them will have done this before. In fact, there aren't many women's 10,000 meter races run, really. There are plenty of marathons and half marathons and five and 3,000 meters, but this race, the 10,000 meters, well, 25 laps of the track is tough, and it's taken a few years to get used to the transition from women's 1,500 meters, 3,000 meters, and then up to 10,000 meters. Big field, there are 27 in it. 2-3-3, three, three, just on the edge of the ground. Shot at Angie, Angie Holly of Leeds City. A lot of these competitors know each other well, of course, having met in distance races all over the world, both on the country, on the track, and on the road. Actually, looking there, Julie Holland, it's great to see her here, you know, because it was only about three years ago when she had that serious car accident and she was left, her leg was in a terrible state, and now she's managed to work her way back to fitness, coached by Brian Scoby in Leeds, trains a lot with Angie, Angie Hulley and also Veronique Marrow, but she must be delighted when she thinks about it. She almost had to give up running three years ago, and now here she is, her first major international in the European Championships. Familiar face from the Commonwealth Games, running 58 there, Abraham of Cyprus, who was 6th in the Commonwealth Marathon and 11th in the 10,000 metres in Auckland earlier this year. They're trying to read that inside lane at the back, clear for the walkers, you can see one coming in, another's just fallen across the line. Certainly, they've got this better organised than the finish of the women's marathon, clashing with the 10,000 metres men on the opening night. Having said that, though, it slightly detracts from the finish of the walk. The 10,000 metres women's championship final. They're on the first bend inside the bollards there, outside in the outer groups case and then they break at the beginning of the back straight. So Julie Holland's gone off very quickly in uh, second place, and Romanova followed her, but now settles down with the group. It reminds me of horse racing this, David. It looks like advantages with the high numbers on the outside on the stand side. <laughs> That's certainly now the case for splitting these fields. Grows and grows and grows. They're not running at pace like the 1,500 metres and 5,000 metre men, uh, but the potential for trouble is still there in the early stages. Well, I think that the problems in the later stages as well, because they'll be lapping athletes in this race because of the spread of abilities that I was talking about. But when I look at the field here, Wanda Panfil of, Soviet, of uh, Poland, who won the London Marathon this year, she's in that field. She's a marathon runner, obviously, and she's going to take a little bit of beating. Number 466 there, moving up on the outside. Catherine Ulrich right next to her, who's more of a track runner. But there are the cross-country runners, like Jill Hunter, who's a great cross-country runner. There's Annette Sargent of France, who's won the World Cross Country a couple of times. So they're, they're coming from different backgrounds. They're meeting here in the middle in the 10,000 metres, and there's... That's Les Morton just coming in, and he's done exceptionally well. He's in the first ten, and Les Morton's had the walk of his life. He really has, and uh, he'll be delighted to be home. We've seen one or two staggering off, and he looks very well indeed. And leading in the 10,000 metres already, Katrin Ulrich, East Germany. The one who they were all looking for results for earlier in the season. They said she's been a bit quiet this year. She impressed last year and she impressed in the World Cup and the European Cup. And now here she is leading this race sensibly because the pace isn't too fast, but it's a better way to do it than just sit in that big group. On the outside there, number 376 in the blue vest of Romania, Victoria Gikan. Probably the favourite and sensing that Ulrich is doing some business. Jill Hunter in third place there, running well. She's had a good season, Jill, and the 10,000 metres, she's grown to, she's grown to, I can't say enjoy it, but she's grown used to the event, and I think she's going to run well tonight. She's geared the whole season towards it. 
has been our most successful middle distance runner this summer and uh, well apart from Yvonne Murray of course but she's been our most successful longer distance runner and this is the race she's been aiming for all season over the 76 second lap then the 78 we're on about 31 31 40 pace at the moment Ulrich reading then uh, Deacon moving through uh, the fastest girl in the world in the Romanian vest looks like uh, Pan Phil of Poland winner of the London Marathon in second place at the moment